That's right. When you hear that music, you know it's time. It is time for Mission Start Podcast. Welcome, everybody. Uh, actually, let me turn it down slightly. It's a little too loud, actually. At least on my end. Okay, hopefully that's good. All right. All right, guys. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Um, we are back. Um, it is week of uh, August 29th. The end of the month for August, and joining me today is no other than Greg Dietz. Hello, hello. And I'm th- gonna be playing some Destiny online while we do this. Okay. I mean, I'm not. So, I'm, I was gonna say something, but no. I think I'll. Well, <laughs> let me let me let me give a little uh, background here. So, if if the followers of this show remember, uh, roughly, I don't know, nine months ago. Ten months ago, I shit all over this game, hard. Yeah. Uh, primarily because I got very bored doing a lot of the same shit. I don't like doing very little stuff over and over and over again for stuff I can't honestly see. There was a lot of problems the game had, but there were a lot of good things. It was very pretty, had a lot of content, like into or not content. I'm sorry. And a lot of stuff you could collect. Uh, but the problem was is there was way too much RNG. You couldn't actually go and buy the uh, the equipment or the stuff you needed to level up the equipment. And you had to find it. There was so much tediousness. I just went, I'm out. And uh, after... Um... No, yeah, there's somebody in the chat. So, Oh, oh hey, there's three people. Yo. Uh, after after a year, Bungie went and said, "Well, this is we're do- fixing a bunch of the stuff that nobody liked, uh, so be prepared for that." Uh, like like Scar says, "Be prepared." Um, they come out with a Twitch show a week ago, and what they show in it had me actually very interested, to the extent that uh, uh, my buddies bought me a copy of the game with all of the expansions. Mm. including the Taken King. Uh, and there's more content now, so I'm not going to get bored so quickly. Um, okay. Uh, and I feel like this this whole journey that Bungie's been taking over the past year um, has really opened their eyes on what to do down the road. Agreed. Agreed. Definitely. Definitely, like... Destiny has definitely turned it around content-wise. Um, it took them a while, um, but they soon realized that shipping a game out with not that much content and kind of emphasizing the whole grind aspect isn't quite quite the way you want to go unless you're Blizzard. People, people don't mind doing a grind if there's something tangible in front of them. I don't mind riding the same roller coaster eight times if I know that on my ninth time I get this shiny gold ring. Like that's what I want to see, but I don't. You don't get that with Destiny. You're like, well, I might as well just play Crucible until I hope to get something cool. Yeah, yeah. And that really sucks. Like that really, that does not fun. Like Zer was probably the most, like the best thing they came out with, where they're like, collect strange coins. How do you get strange coins? You might get them in strikes. Yeah. So it's like it's just. I don't know. They they're fixing that though. Like all the stuff that you want to get to get the new stuff, like you can buy all of it now. There's a lot of shit they changed. It's really cool. Yep, definitely. But we're not here about we're not here to talk about Destiny. No, we are here to talk about other topics the past week. Look, uh, I was just telling you I was playing Destiny. Again. I know. I know. <laughs> we just went to this spiel of Destiny. Um <laughs> But, uh, so, we got a lot of topics to talk about today, I believe. Let me see, where should we go? Let's start with something that I'm very excited about, and I'm pretty sure you're pretty excited too, uh, Greg. And that is, as I put this on... Oops, hang on. Sorry, I got this new thing now working with, uh, there we go. So, uh, Shovel Knight is coming to the Wii U, but... Oh my god. With the announcement last night that the, uh, what was it? They announced a amiibo for Shovel Knight, which you can use on your game, which allows you to play co-op. So think of, like, 
It's two. already on the Wii U, but yes, yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's an update more than anything. Mm-hmm. And I forgot to get some B-roll footage for that. Or was it, or more, I don't think I was able to, just because, like, the only trailer was out of Game Grumps, so I'm not sure if that was okay. Yes, so, uh, it was actually really funny. I watch Game Grumps every day, because I fucking love Danny. Um, and Aaron was talking about how he didn't specify in an episode what he was referring to. But, uh, okay, so, oh God, I want to say couple months ago they came out with an advertisement for um uh crunchy roll before an episode that they recorded and you know it's in their style of humor and just silly and nonsensical and whatnot and then uh right after that um i guess they got a call from from yacht club games and they and yacht club wanted them to make a, fuck, a similar thing towards the because it, 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 Aaron, all Aaron said was that, I'm not going to say who it is, but when they called, I was just like, hell yeah, I want to do that. Like, that sounds amazing. So, uh, but I guess Yacht Club was, um, and I've put two and two together, that's why I'm saying this. But Yacht Club was very adamant about them making this, uh, uh, um, an ad that was very similar to the Crunchyroll ad, but, like, different somehow. And, uh... And so, yeah, that's, um, that's how Game Grumps got to do that. But apparently that's the official ad for it, too. Okay. That's not just, yeah, that's not just, uh, something that the Game Grumps did. That's, like, that's full-on official. Okay. Um, yeah, I was, uh, really excited to see that, um, it was announced. And, I mean, like, look, I have Amiibos in my, on my desk right now. Like, I have freaking Kirby and Pikachu and whatever. I just bought some new Amiibos yesterday. Supposed to be in, actually. Um, I'm totally down for having a show on that Amiibo. And it kind of gives speculation because it is. There's some speculation now that because it's an Amiibo for Shovel Knight that he's going to be uh, confirmed for Smash. Whether that be the case or not, we have to wait and see, but it could be. Yeah, not all not all amiibos are are gonna be for Smash. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's something that even Sakurai said, like, and Nintendo said, like, we're gonna release a bunch of amiibos. Don't, you know, don't don't expect them to be in certain games. So, but you know, I sincerely hope he comes to Smash. That would be amazing. Oh yeah. Um, it's this in- this particular announcement has me very excited because. Um, a, I'm a huge Shovel Knight fan. If, I mean, I have a fucking review where I just gush about the first level. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, like, I, I love that Yacht Club Games has been able to make, because the game is in such high demand, they're able to make uh, uh, exclusives for each console. Like, granted, I think PlayStation 4 is weaker than the others. Uh, Xbox right now has the best one, but with the Amiibo and co-op, like, that fucking rules. And I, I want everything involved with that. Mm-hmm. Can't. You know, the money. <laughs> well, uh, you know, you could always just come to my place and, you know, play it on, on my Wii U, so... Oh, that's true. We could also stream that shit. Yeah, yeah. We could stream that shit, motherfucker. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Like, even if... Even if I don't have a Wii U, I definitely am going to seek out and try to find that. Because it's just like I said with, with LEGO Dimensions. Like, if if I never get to, uh... If I never get to, um, uh, buy the full thing of LEGO Dimensions, I at least want a Chell LEGO. Right, right, definitely, definitely. Um, I'm excited for it. I, I, I'm pretty excited for, for what's to come. Um, and this is on the heels of... Like, the Yacht Club recently announced that they're going to do a, um... They should have a trailer for the new, uh, uh expansion of Shovel Knight. Well, I should, have put the, I should have brought that in here, but I forgot to. Um, which looks, looks really cool. It looks like it's... It looks like, for those who don't know, um... So they're having a free DLC for Shovel Knight, uh... I believe for PC and all other platforms, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyways, it's um, based on the chemical boss in Shovel Knight, and you play as him, and you're going through all Plug the... Plug Knight is his name. Yeah, Plug Knight. Pl- Plague Knight. 
and you go through, I want to say, it looked like some of the same levels as Shovel Knight went through, uh, but some were different. Um, and it's really cool and interesting to see a different mechanic in the game, uh, and how he plays is so vastly different than Shovel Knight is. So whether this may be a continuing theme of possibly having other knights as a DLC to play through the game, that'd be great. That'd be cool. Uh, you know, they've, they've talked about other expansions like playing the whole game of Shield Knight and shit like that, so... That's, that's more so what I want to see. I want to... Like, I'm, I'm excited for the gender swapping thing, so like, you know, show, like every character is gender swapped. Yeah. Uh, rule, I think... I think the, the like, people are calling it the rule... Is the rule 64? Some, What's the gender swap rule? I can't remember. I, it's some sort of rule, some sort of number. It's something like uh. that. Uh, but case in point, we're all excited for Shovel Knight, and please, please, let me have that amiibo. Then you know that amiibo's gonna go uh, sell fast quickly when oh I go God. online. I hope there's enough of them. I know. I mean, I know Nintendo just announced that they're going to be re-releasing -re a lot of the rare amiibos again, because, well, they're rare, and people can't find them. Mm-hmm. Agreed, agreed. Okay, so, next topic. Let's see, I want to go here because we're on the eve of Metal Gear Solid 5 coming out. We've there has been tons of reviews that have came out already. Um and people really and so far the, the the reviews have been all nines and tens or nearly up there. And uh let me get the viewer footage actually. Uh Metal Gear, here we go. So uh recently uh Hideo Kojima released the final edited trailer um, of metal of a Metal Gear game, um, he has edited, I believe, a 90% of the um, Metal Gear trailers that have came out over its, the span of its uh, lifespan. And this is the last time we'll ever get to see him ed a edit a uh, Metal Gear trailer um, since this is it for him. Since he's leaving Konami after this, so it's kind of a bittersweet. The trailers really good um it kind of harkens back to like the original metal gears like metal gear solid one two three and then up until uh, mgs5 uh a a, a farewell as you, as you can say so um <laughs> it's cool i mean like how do kojima again like uh, that game is getting some fucking phenomenal pre pre-release ratings man definitely definitely it's gonna launch it's gonna sell a bunch of copies um Hey, we talked about this last stream, like, our last podcast. It's, it's going to sell a lot for two reasons. It's highly anticipated. Yes. Um, and uh, people want to play, you know, Kojima's last Konami game. Agreed, agreed. So, yeah, definitely. Um, nice, it was, it, was, it, was, it was nice to see kind of how he combined the previous Metal Gear games uh, with this final trailer for MGS5. So, um, really cool. Showed off all the Metal Gears. Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, is, 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 is it a series that's groundbreaking? It, you, you could argue that. Um, is it a series that has some wacky-ass story? Yes, you could say that as well. Um, but yeah, uh, Metal Gear, everybody's excited. MGS5, yeah, it's gonna happen. So I just wanna yeah. put that out there. <laughs> That's on shelves now. Go get it. <laughs> you heard it here first. It's close. <laughs> All right. So it was interesting enough that this happened yesterday, um, because as we get on to the next topic, let me switch it up real quick. Uh, okay. So the thing about this is that um, so. It's funny how this happened in my timeline, and I, and I posted a picture of it. When Shovel Knight Amiibo announced, everyone was going crazy. It's like, oh my god, Shovel Knight is coming out to Nintendo Wii U, and it's, the, the Amiibo is coming out, it's co-op. Oh, it's, it's exciting. At the same time, I, it was like it was still talked about, even though it was, the trailer was showing off in the morning. But the new character for Street Fighter V was announced that same morning, and her name is Armika. And for those who don't know, uh, Armika also known as uh, Rainbow Mika, was a character from Alpha 2, or Alpha 3, it was from the Alpha series. She is a luchador wrestler, 
uh, more type of character. Um, much of her moves are, are wrestler-esque, as you can see on screen. Um, and uh, she was very fan servicey in Alpha, and that has not stopped Ono oh and everybody at Capcom from making her fan servicey now. Um, literally, like her super is like literally her and her like tag team partner just smashing the Vegas face with their butts. No, no lie. Um, so people were okay. I, I get that people were up, up, up in arms, and we're talking about people who are like who, in, in, in the sense of like you know, why is this character you know in this outfit? Why why is she you know this and this and that? The kind of same argument for every other char female character that is portrayed in a certain way. Of course. So, I get that. We live in a different time and era than we, we were used to back in the day. But at the same time, that's kind of how our, that's how, with some characters, that's kind of how they originated from. Um, in the case of Armika, this is how she was in Alpha Series. Um, the way she dresses, yeah. the way she acts. Um, and changing it for modern standards to what what a minority is calling out for I think would have been I think it would have been I wouldn't say completely honoring the character as it was but at the same time a game company has to step in and say like we're gonna do this because this is what we believe the character is gonna be you know we're not gonna listen to a certain minority group just because um, this character has to change to have a more diverse and more equal rights to everybody. I fucking hate, hate it. When people sit there and say, well, I think that something like this is too much. Is she's too, okay. <laughs> okay. I go on time hop. And I was recently reminded of a situation that happened at SAC Anime last year. There was a, there was a woman, you may have, you may remember this, Anthony. There was a woman who was cosplaying as Rita Repulsa. If you remember, Rita Repulsa's costume has these very Madonna-esque bra boob things. Mm -hmm. And a woman comes up to her with her child about 11 years old and says, you know, y you shouldn't be wearing that around children. Do you even care about the kids? And she's like, ma'am, this is what the character wears. I watched this as a kid. And the woman's like, well, you have terrible parents. Please don't make fun of my parents. Or please don't talk badly about my parents. That's what she said. Shortly after that, the child then recognizes a character from Kill a Kill. This particular character wears borderline nothing. Like, I think it's just belts and, and pockets. Um, and she's female. So, you know, lots of boob being shown. No nipple, but lots of boob. Mm hmm And the mom looks back at the other cosplay the cosplayer dresses Rita. Like the fact that the eleven year old recognized this just mortified her. Oh yeah. And <laughs> this is exactly like my problem. People want to get on their fucking high horse and be like, well, because it's not something I'm used to. You know, it's a big no-no. Yeah, see, here's the thing, too, and I agree. And, uh, okay, I'll, I'll say this. Because people are going to be like, oh, he doesn't agree with, with women's rights. So. I don't agree with women's rights? What are you talking no, about? No, 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 I'm talking about what I'm about to say. Oh. So. I, I, I get why women will get upset about this. I get why people who don't get upset by this and why I feel that I'm trying to phrase this right before I get lambasted by every other woman on earth um, there are certain things that um, that if it has history um, yeah, I don't know how to say this. You guys pick and choose your battles, <laughs> pretty much. Like, like I'm it, all for people being yeah. offended by this. I have yeah. no issues with people going, well, but I don't like it because you know it, it just goes against my sensibility. That's fine. 
But to tell others that they can't enjoy it because it goes against your sensibilities, that's where it's fucked up. And I think that's the issue that both of us take. Yeah. Like, don't tell me I can't enjoy Armika because she's scantily clad. Agreed. Like, Agreed. that has nothing to do with why I enjoy the game, first off. Secondly, who the fuck's to say that that character didn't, you know, like, you're not putting any context to the character. You're just saying, I don't like it. That's all you're saying. Yeah. With nothing behind it. Yeah. yeah. That's so stupid. That's like if, if all of a sudden, you know, there's a, there's a, ha, <laughs> ha, Let's say there's a fat character in fucking Metal or in, in in Street Fighter 4, you know, because there is. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know he's dressed and acts very, I don't know, stereotypical to fat people. Mm -hmm. And I personally am in the back of my mind find it offensive. I'm never gonna tell someone go fuck yourself because I don't like it. Yeah. You know you enjoy it, play the character. You think he's funny because he's fat, then you think he's funny because he's fat. Yeah. So the fuck what? Get the goddamn fuck over it. Get the fucking stick out of your ass and enjoy life. Yeah. The other thing too is that, not to bring them like social uh, norms or everything, but like this generation of people are so sensitive to every little thing that it's no any... no 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 no. Let me stop you there. Okay. That's, everyone's always been that way. That has not changed. Here's the difference though. Those people have a fucking outlet to be put on the internet now. Good point. You and I, you and I, uh, 30 years ago, we wouldn't be doing this. We'd probably be humble people living at, you know, meager earnings at a job, getting together maybe occasionally and talking about video games between us. But now, because of the internet, we have an outlet to do a podcast. 30 years... And have a good time. I was about to say, 30 years ago, I wasn't even born, so... And you would have been three... I, well, I'm, I'm not. I'm an actual age. I'm talking about if we were as old as we are now, 30 years ago. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but that's my point. Is that we're just hearing more of it. It's like people like sit there and go, "Well, there's more stupid people out there." No, there's always been stupid people. That's just you, you just hear them more often now. Like that's mm -hmm. that's it. You that's just, true. Yeah. They have an outlet, and unfortunately, everyone has that same outlet, so... Yeah, definitely. Um, it's just, you know, like, I love Armika. I think she looks great. I think she... Oh, yeah, like, oh, my God. A fucking luchador chick? That is amazing. I am yes. stoked to play as her. Like, yes. I thought she was fantastic. And mm. I don't even fucking play those games. <laughs> See, I think what sort of for me was that she, her alpha counter, and for those who don't know, an alpha counter is when... Uh, and if your opponent attacks you and you activate this, uh, I'm not sure what it is, this button combination on, on your controller to um, hit the other character while you get hit. A counter, if you will. So her alpha counter is literally Stone Cold t boss and Stunner. She kicks, as you saw in the trailer on, on, on stream, she kicks the opponent in the chest and then goes for the Stunner afterwards, which is like, oh, I saw this at work. I saw this at work in the morning. And like I'm like just like I didn't get loud, but I was like, oh shit, just like doing that like whisper hype. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was, yeah. it was pretty legit. Like I, I'm a big fan of. Oh, damn it, sorry. A guy walked around the corner and just fucking shotgun blasted me in the face. Uh, Pause. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm playing online. I've been, I know, I've been I playing know. online the whole time. It just kind of surprised me. Uh, but yeah, like uh. uh I love luchadors. I always have, and her design is so fucking cool. And I don't know. I just, I just don't get, I don't get the fucking uh, anger towards it. And and I'm really excited to see what she can do. Like, that's another thing that confounds me is people will sit there and scream foul if a character is, and, and hear me out on this, but a character, people will scream foul if a character is. Uh, like, a female character isn't portrayed in a positive light. Like, she's helpless or she's constantly uh, in trouble sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but the second that, like... Like, a, a female character can't be dressed like that. They It has to be one or the other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's... Yeah, like, it's... De it, 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 it it's it's a difficult balance and i think that at this point 
I feel like game companies should stick to their guns and just kind of ignore certain um, certain. Yeah, no, they definitely should. They definitely yeah. shouldn't redesign her. They definitely shouldn't. Yeah, redesign definitely. Her. If, you know, like like that was the thing about the the new uh, Tomb Raider game was that there's a scene in it where Laura Croft is, well, if you lose, she gets it's clearly she gets raped and killed. Like that's just the way that it works. Yeah. And people were so fucking pissed off about that. And I'm just like, you suck. You all suck. That's <laughs> that's what this comes down to. Mm-hmm. Can't even fucking let programmers, you know, have freedom. You gotta fucking stifle that shit too. Yeah. I call it. I call it. It's it's societal censorship is what i call it agreed agreed yeah and it's it's really unfortunate it it truly truly is unfortunate so yeah i don't know i'm 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 down with armika oh yeah i I like her i think she's fucking rad and i want to play as her yes the minute i saw that trailer i was like she's my new main aside from cammy she is my new main as of now unless there's some cool ass character they show off like cute and it's like okay my mind has been changed again (laughs) (laughs) all right next topic so, uh, may, I, may I ask you, Greg, did you watch the Super Mario Brothers movie back in the, when it came out? Oh, God, I went to the theater to see it. Um, and for years, I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably, no, I'll take that back. Perhaps the most awful video game movie of all time. I mean, you could, you know, argue between that and Mortal Kombat. But, um... The reason why I bring this up is because uh, Shigeru Miramoto, uh, and this is from Fortune.com, uh, Shigeru, Shigeru Miramoto talks Nintendo's return to the movie world. Um, and I'll read a quote from here from his uh, interview. So, I'll read this one right here. Quote, for Nintendo IP, a more active approach will be taken in the areas outside the video game business, including visual, content production, and character merchandising, the company said. It will it was an understand announcement, but it's surprising to the few people who noticed it. Um so here's the thing. I think Nintendo can do it now. I think Nintendo after what have this is this came out in nineteen ninety three, right? So they really, ha- so, yeah. yeah. So they have, they have seen over the years other video game movies tried and failed, but they've seen some that recently has succeeded in the past couple of years, uh, a la Wreck-It Re- Ralph. And I think they can do it. I think I think they they they. Sh- I want to want to believe in Nintendo. Say they they have the technology and they have uh, the. Uh, the imagination to, to, to pull it off. Um, but it's all going to depend on how they do it. Live, uh, live action or animation. I would suggest animation. I think it works better. Um, but yeah, I think they can do it. I th- I, I have faith in Nintendo. Yeah, I, I mean, I... That'd be great. I, 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 I mean, I don't see any problem with it. Uh, what I'd like to see them do, though, is make something that's in line of, like, a really cool story that combines all of their franchises together into like one cohesive like world's crossing story hello yeah you're here oh yeah um continue sorry i got really quiet on my end and then the stream kind of lagged and i was like what the hell uh sorry uh it just went off okay there it goes yeah sorry i forgot to connect the 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 cord so we're on Wi-Fi uh, but yeah you're, you're back on okay uh, like I, you know like kind of how uh, the the fucking um, subspace emissary was yeah that would be great something something like that but it's it's more in line of like there's voice acting and there's a proper plot that like like and there's three main characters you know you got, you'll you'll have uh, Mario Link and Samus and they kind of, you know, they they come across other characters like, I don't know. I think I think it could work in a movie. Definitely. Um, yeah, a crossover game like that would be great. I mean, game. I mean, movie. <laughs> um, I already have a game like that. It's called Smash. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah I want to see that. That'd be cool. Um, I don't know what direction they're gonna take in. Um, but I think they'll stick to animation. I think they've been an indication. I think the Smash games kind of showed off, like, 
Um, they could definitely do something with that. Um, combining other characters and whatnot. Uh, or take it, you know, in a separate, different direction. Uh, but I think Nintendo has the, the chops to do it. I think they can do it. Uh, I just hope it doesn't become yeah. their, you know, Mario Brothers, like, in 93. And even then, I'll be like, that's hilarious and awesome that they went for it <laughs> again. I don't think there's so much. <laughs> there was, oh, my God. Sorry. Oh, there's so much behind why that movie was bad. Oh, yeah, it's definitely. It's ridiculous. <laughs> The script moved between three different people, and the people that it ended up on had never played a video game in their life. Um, on set, shit just was like, it sucked. Uh, apparently there wasn't a lot of food or beverages for some weird ass reason, so all the actors had to use their own money. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't give a shit about the movie. Uh, fucking apparently, apparently Bob Hopkins and, and John Leguizamo were drunk all the time. <laughs> like the, awesome. uh, uh, fucking Bob Hopkins, Bob Hopkins breaks his hand in an early scene in the movie where he slams the door to a um to uh the van that they have. Uh huh. And um he slams his hand in it, breaking his hand. And then so for the rest of the film, they had to film everything with like this like red sleeve that went over his cast and just try to film it creatively <laughs> but bob is still drunk so like half the lines aren't coming out and there's so many problems like it's it's really funny yep yeah definitely definitely um yeah if for those if for those who know you definitely go check out like behind the scenes you know, look up the information on like how that movie ended up even being released it's a really really interesting stuff okay so Next topic. Um, sticking to the uh, sticking to the uh, what we're looking for. Um, memory train. So let me ask you, Greg. Have you ever played Torok? Yes, I don't like it. <laughs> I played back in the day. I played a little bit of it um, when it came out. I remember I was went up to a friend's place uh, and I played it because I was bored. And this I think this is like right after I just beat uh, Star Fox 64, and uh, it was interesting. Um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Like it was just kind of a weird type of you know dino first person sh shooter rope with a bow, um, and yeah, uh, it it was a thing that happened. <laughs> so the reason why I bring this up is because. Turok 2, I mean not Turok 2, but like, yeah, Turok 1 and 2 actually, um, are being remastered, and a company is actually remastering this version, is, uh, where was, oh, I just lost the company name, um, actually, do I have it here, oh yeah, by Night, uh, Night Dive Studios, those, that's the company that's working on it, so, it's a remaster. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a remaster of the uh, of the mm -hmm. game. Um, it's gonna be in full HD for whatever that's worth to you guys. Um, yeah, and it's just it's, just, it's a weird announcement that was that happened this past week. But uh, you know, I mean, I don't really particularly have fond memories of Torok. I remember it was really weird because like it was some platforming elements in that game as well. Like I remember it going through this kind of like this uh, gauntlet of just like uh, axes and like uh, rocks you had to avoid in your first person the entire time, and the controls were not that great. Cause on the N64 for first person shooters, like it was great for some things, but it was not great for particularly jumping, so or aiming for that matter. So yeah, um, there you go, fans. You want a Turok remastered HD? Sure. <laughs> It's, I feel like they're kind of going in, in the same vein as hopefully hope. I mean, maybe they change it enough where it's like, uh, like uh, RE. You're 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 just a spitting image of. <laughs> like, it, it, it's like you know what? It, I think they're trying to piggyback off the whole Resident Evil Revelations uh, HD release that they that Capcom has been doing that's been doing a pretty good job. That or just you know put HD out for the sake of HD. So yeah. So yeah, Turok. Yes. Nothing. Yay, nothing. yay, Turok. 
Um, all right, so this is something actually really important because like I actually tried tried to work this on Joycaster to make it work, but um, this is actually pretty important because now as we stream here on Twitch, recently this past week, YouTube's launched their own gaming. Uh, I want to say site, but kind of site slash uh, stream thing as well. So let's let let let's go back in in history for a little bit. Um, so to kind of give emphasis of, as to why exactly YouTube launched their own gaming platform, it's because initially back then YouTube and Twitch were going to have a partnership. Um, they were going to merge, um, and what ended up happening is that didn't happen. Um, Twitch implemented their own kind of content ID system instead of YouTube's and because of that the deal was broken off for some reason. I can't remember the whole details on parts like why the deal was broken off. Um, it may be because they wanted more competition. I don't know. Anyways it didn't happen. So then Twitch signed with Amazon and now Amazon and Twitch are a thing now. And YouTube, because of this, they failed to get Twitch. They launched their own yep. gaming platform. So now they have a, they recently launched a YouTube gaming website, or part of it, uh, where it is dedicated to gaming channels and live streams. And so far, the reception seems to be that people do not like the UI at all, and I can agree. I think it looks great on mobile and iPad, but on the site it looks pretty god god awful. Um, but uh, stream is fine, you know it's good. Um, YouTube videos, you know, really, VODs are really good. The question now becomes like, how are they going to fare off against Twitch? And I'll say is one more thing for let you talk, Greg. The one thing that has stopped many Twitch users from switching to, to YouTube streaming is because the fact that um, the content ID on YouTube is horrendous if you're not partnered with a uh, MCM or you know in, a, in, in this example Machinima for us. So then when somebody so an example when somebody streams and they have like some copyright material on their stream uh, the YouTube stream content IT can actually mute the stream or in some cases cut off the stream completely so there's some stuff that YouTube has to work out but I think what really hurts is that content ID that they have in place right now yeah because on Twitch uh, somebody can stream something that doesn't have a lot of sound or doesn't have a lot of uh, need for audio and can have uh, song requests on. You can't do that on uh, YouTube right now. Yeah, you, you can't do that on YouTube. Oh shit, hang on. Oop. Yeah, dude, your mic keeps cutting in and out and it's driving me nuts. Sorry about that. Um, refresh. No, no. All right, hang on. All right. Stop. Okay. I'm gonna get the cord right now. Let me pause the stream for a minute. Ugh.
plugged in. Cool. Thanks. Yep. All right. That should be a lot better now. Maybe it's my headphones. Okay, let's boot this back up. Oops, shit. Ah. All right. We back. Sorry about that, guys. Less than another day. Whenever we start streaming, always attach the cord. Never go Wi-Fi. <laughs> so let me continue the music. Okay. So, as we were saying, uh, hang on a minute, let me put the, there we go. Okay, so as we were saying, um, watch you, as you were saying actually, uh, about the YouTube thing. YouTube, you were talking about YouTube's content ID, and I was talking about how their content ID is so strong that, um, if a streamer on Twitch is streaming, in the process of streaming, and let's say they want, uh, song request on which allows the audience to use SoundCloud or YouTube to uh, well request a song and uh, you know YouTube actually has the has the ability to just straight up shut down the stream whereas Twitch is like it's fine it's live you know whatever I mean you afterwards your VOD might be audio -less. Um, but you know for like a moment because we don't want to deal with the copyright shit but you know during your stream it's fine yeah definitely so I think that YouTube has very uh, has has good potential with this but what's holding it back is its own content ID system unless they either modify it to recognize there's I don't some... think that's the only thing holding it back what else do you think is holding it back other than like people kind of let me tell you something. If you tell someone, yeah, go to my stream, all you got to do is go to gaming.youtube.com slash blah, blah, blah. That's a lot more complicated than twitch.tv slash. Good point. Good point. Twitch yeah. has also been going strong for four years now. Yeah, that is true. Uh, a lot of people at Rooster Teeth and Funhouse have been talking about how they really do see... Uh, YouTube gaming becoming a big thing because... Gaming in general, if we're talking about where you would go to see games, to see content, you'd go to YouTube. It is a bigger gaming platform on the internet than Twitch is, Agreed. in terms of just views alone. But, this is live streaming we're talking about. There's a difference between live streaming and just watching YouTube videos, edited videos, you know, like... So I think Twitch has a lot... Or not Twitch, but uh, YouTube has a lot to do before they can have any remote competition. Because I went to I went to gaming.youtube.com the other day, and a lot of like their highest channel only had like two thousand viewers. Interesting. And it I wasn't even League of Legends. Hmm. I was uh, I was going on the other day on the mobile app, which is great, but um. You know, I didn't bother to look at the, the amount of, t of numbers, I think. You, you're right, maybe, like, yeah, like, Twitch has definitely has a much more following than, than YouTube has. I mean, to be fair, though, YouTube just launched it, its gaming platform. So. Right, my, but my point is, is that what YouTube is going to have to do is figure out a way to bring in that audience. Mm -hmm. Figure out a way to... Allowing streamers like giving giving them an option that twitch doesn't give having having me join the stream late and being able to rewind the footage to watch the stream not in real time anymore or to know how far back i was like cool whatever if i wanted to watch the whole stream and i knew i was going to be late if it's on twitch i have two options here i can watch the rest of the stream as is live or wait until it's over and then watch the VOD. You know, like, or if I watch it halfway through and I and I catch the last half an hour of it, I can go back and watch the first half an hour of the VOD. Yep. It's, not, it's not that much of a complicated process to where that's something that should be the defining factor of why you go to YouTube.gaming. I'm sorry, gaming.youtube before mm -hmm. Twitch or, or, you know, Switch. Yeah. You know, Hitbox, Hitbox is still struggling hard 
to to bring people from Twitch over to them. Yeah. And Hitbox was like, I got it. We'll make everyone a partner. Well, I hate to say it this way, but if ever, well, I just spit everywhere. <laughs> if if everyone's a superhero, no one's a superhero. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm gonna say real quick. Oops. Um, so yeah, and you've, uh, your your points are valid, and I think that YouTube has a lot to go for. And even now, like Twitch's VODs are actually getting a lot better. As like like it's it's at a point where if somebody's still streaming. There was already a VOD already in place while that stream was happening, and a good part of that already is recorded, and you can watch up until maybe like the last hour, hour and a half before the fully finished product uh, on on Twitch's VODs. So, what do I will we say, see? Oh, go ahead. I will. I will say that this is ultimately a good thing for gamers. Oh yeah. Because agreed. agreed. If let's say, for instance. YouTube does do something that brings a lot of the Twitch streamers over to their channel. Um, and it's it's a real competition. Like, competition in a capitalist thing is always good for both the, you know, content providers and the, uh, and the viewers. Like, this is in no way going to fuck anybody over. Agreed. Agreed. I think that competition is always good. Um, it, it brings out the, the, the you know the, the better ideas out of everybody. Well, sometimes. Um, and uh, it's a it's, it's a good thing. We can only lead to better and more awesome things from both from Twitch and from YouTube. So, um, yeah, and having two giants of corporations going at it is great. So, uh, but yeah, time will only tell. Right now, as it stands, Twitch is the winner. For, for for now for now yep so i believe this is the last topic yeah it is okay okay last topic so mortal kombat x so let's let let's see it came out this past year it came out i believe in march if i'm mistaken the ps1 xbox one version ps4 version i mean um, the PC version did come out, but it has been worked on multiple times. I'm not quite sure if it's still even functional at this point. Semi-functional, some people may say, uh, on the PC version. Um, and this is the company Warner Brothers that who have um, released some other games as well that have problems with their ports. Um, recently, they announced this past week that the Xbox 360 and PS3 of the game has been cancelled. Um, let me read the quote that they talked about this. So, from the Mortal Kombat X uh, forums, um, after months of development, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment has come to the regrettable conclusion that we cannot release Mortal Kombat X for the PS3 and Xbox 360. Please know our teams work digitally to meet the quality standards set by the current gen versions of the game. We are we are we were not able to get the PS3 and Xbox 360 version in the to the quality expected to Mortal Kombat to the Mortal Kombat game, and are very sorry for not being able to deliver the products as originally planned. If you pre-ordered Mortal Kombat X for PS3 or Xbox 360, please go to retail location where you pre-order the game, and you receive a full refund. So. Um, where to begin? Where to begin? Warner Brothers have now had a good reputation when it comes to the ports this past year. Um, this is another example. Previous was the Batman fiasco with the PC mm -hmm. uh, ported a game. Um, yeah, but there's a reason. There was a reason for the PC one fucking up. True, true. So should have never gone to PC. Is basically what that comes down to. Pretty much. So. I don't remember seeing any footage of the Xbox 360 or PS3 version of MKX, um, but judging just kind of how their PC port was, um, it probably wasn't in a better state or maybe as an equal state as PC if they felt they needed to cancel both versions. So again, um, but to be fair, I mean they, they cut off the losses. They they don't want to have another fiasco like they did prior. Yeah, no, I mean it sucks. Yeah, it sucks to not be able to play that game for the you know, the, the, the past gen consoles, but at the same time, you know, the the, the PS three and the and the Xbox One are 
close to being two years old here. You mean Xbox 360? No, the Xbox One and the PS4 are close oh. to being two years old now. You said PS3. Did I say PS3? I meant PS4. My bad. Oh, okay, no, that's right. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that understanding that uh, it's coming down to that point where developing games for past gen is not worth it anymore yeah that it's it's not only added stress but it's added money that could go elsewhere and i think develop more and more developers are definitely understanding that mm -hmm. definitely it is we're getting to that point where it is better to just um focus on the next gen consoles or i'd say that right now at this point current gen than last gen um it, it happens every console generation it happened with the gamecube with the ps2 uh with the xbox one of uh, the original xbox <laughs> um it's just a thing that happens in the game industry and like you can only support a, a, a system for so long i still think the last gener generation consoles still have life for at least another year or two um i'm very curious to win is Microsoft going to cut off that their Xbox Live service soon, or is that going to keep on going as long as they can? Whoa, 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 what? No, I'm saying, like, for Xbox 360, because they have a, you know... Oh, Xbox no, 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 no. Well, because that's the thing, is that regardless of... I mean, you got to think of it this way, like, the servers for the Xbox went on for a really long time. It wasn't until, like, the release of Halo Reach that they were like... Okay, we're shutting down the servers for Halo 2. Which I think was like one of the last games that the Xbox original could play. Mm hmm So, I mean, it's, uh... I don't think they'll do it anytime soon, but... And there'll still be games developed for the past gen. I just think that if a, if a development company is trying to make a, a next-gen game, that they're going to stop making next-gen games, uh... Like, to port them to the, to the past gen. Like, I just don't, I don't see it happening anymore. Right, yeah, definitely. Um, so, I was going to say, uh, there we go. Um, yeah, so it is definitely, uh, it is, it is definitely, um, the, 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 the times are changing, if, if you will, or, or turning of the tide, um, and yeah, it's just kind of how the way the video game industry works, you know, as usual. So, um, sad to see, you know, last time people can't play Mortal Kombat X, but at the same time, just, this just means if the company can't make it in time and has to cancel it, there's a clear indication. It's like, well, I think it's time to upgrade. I think yep. it's time yep. to join the rest of us. I mean, dude, the, the Xbox One now is cheap. The PS, the, you can get PS4s that are cheap, like... I know guys with very little money who have PS4s now, so it's not like it's, uh, it's not like it's terribly difficult. And at the same point, like, and I hate to sound this way because it's not meant to sound rude, but even if it was me, I'd still put myself in this scenario. If you can't afford to buy the new console, then you shouldn't be playing games in the first place because the gaming fucking hobby is extremely expensive. I know that sounds fucked up, but it's the truth. Like, it's not fucked have, up. It's not. You, you have to put that into context. Like, if you can't afford the shit, then don't play it. It's like if you can't afford an Xbox One, then you, then chances are you probably can't afford Xbox Live. And if you can't afford Xbox Live, chances are you're having trouble affording fucking internet in the first place. So it's like, you know. I don't want to mm -hmm. tell people, like, don't buy things. Right, right, but... definitely. Yep. Yep. So, nothing nothing much else to say. So, But that's going to do it for us. Let me pop up the... There we go. Bye. Awesome. So, yeah, that's, that's the end of the show, guys. Um, Thanks for coming by. Thanks for checking out the show. Before we go... That on a, uh... On a strong punch of telling people to fuck off if they can't afford things. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> this guy makes me angry. I'm unsubscribing. Fuck you. Um, it's all right. Truth, man. Like, <laughs> don't fucking sit there and get angry that something is 
advancing te technological wise while you're sitting there going like well I can't afford this if you can't afford the new console then why are you even buying new games agreed agreed so Greg before we go where can they find you on the internet <laughs> you can come yell at me on uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram <laughs> at Shabrucky. Uh, you can, can tell me how wrong I am on uh, Twitch when I stream on Half Empty Energy Tank on Saturdays. Um, also, depending if I'm covering somebody, but you know, you'll you'll find that out on Twitch and Facebook. Uh, you can come read my reviews on the website and tell me that my opinion sucks. Um, you can also uh, soon here, as soon as I send you the the audio files, I will be doing. Uh, well, Anthony and I are collaborating on, on video reviews. Mm -hmm. So uh, that'll be a thing on our YouTube soon. Yes. You'll see much of that really, really soon. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Defective Naruto. You can follow the work that me and Greg do on our website at MissionStartPodcast.com. Also, if you enjoy this podcast, um, the audio version from last week actually hasn't been put up. So I'll put, I'll put up today along with today's but anyways if you enjoyed this audio video podcast be sure to subscribe to us on itunes and stitcher um look up mission start podcast you can also find us on our website at missionstartpodcast.com if you enjoy convention talk if you enjoy our experiences we've been to to several conventions um ch definitely check out the con over we recently just had a new episode talking about uh this past year's j-pop summit and me and Ren talked about all things J-pop uh, in that episode. And if you enjoy the Rolling Twenties, I mean, if you enjoy comic books, HBO, movies, entertainment, all that good stuff, be sure to check out the Rolling Twenties, which you can find on our website at missionsartpodcast.com, as well as on iTunes and Stitcher. Um, so, uh, just heads up everybody here, um, there will not be a show next week. Um, and, uh, sorry, there, there won't be a show next week because I will be actually out in Chicago, um, because a certain somebody in my family wanted to shoot me out for my graduation, so that's my graduation gift for me, which is awesome. So, no, no show, no show next week, um, but we'll be back the following week. Um, right. yeah. So again. I'll forget that and text you and then you'll send me know. <laughs> So, with that, we see you guys next time.